I'd like to start um, the regular board meeting today at 6.34, April 23rd, 2019. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence, please? Monica, may I have roll call? Mr. Moreno? Here. Mrs. Quintana? Here. Mr. Rolla? Here. Mr. Thomas? Here. I would like to amend the agenda. There is a need to amend the agenda to add business items 4.2, treasure appointment to fill the vacancy left by Dr. Hyde. Can I get a motion? Madam Chair, I move to amend the agenda with for the addition of item 4.2, appointment of a treasurer um, on the board. May I have a second? Madam Chair, I second. Roll call, please. Mr. Moreno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Madam Chair, I move the approval of the amended agenda. May I have a motion? Second. Second. May I have roll call, Monica? Mr. Moreno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. I'd like to have approval of the a motion for the approval of minutes for April 3rd, 2019, April 9th, 2019, April 16, 2019. Madam Chair, I move to approve the meeting minutes of April 3rd, April 9th, and April 16th, 2019. May I have, may I have a second? Madam Chair, I second April 3rd, April 9th, and April 16th minutes. Monica, may I have roll call? Mr. Moreno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Now we are going to move on to audience comments and you can come up, you can um, say your name, no address. You can be have a negative critique, but do not name out names or anything like that, okay? So next I would like to have Lauren Martinez and Kevin Clark. And this would be, am I correct, Monica, just three minutes? Yes. Okay. Um, sure. Good morning. Uh, mem I'm sorry, morning. <laughs> it's see, evening. Had a long day here. Uh, good evening, members of the board, um, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Kevin Clark. I'm the senior class president at Adam City High School, but today I speak on behalf of the Adam City Marching Band, of which I'm the senior drum major, um, along with my um, junior drum major Lauren Martinez. Uh, we're here today to talk about the band uniforms um, and how we are in a dire need to replace them. Um, we've had these band uniforms for about 15 years now, older than the high school itself. Um, and we believe that it's necessary that they be replaced. So we just wanted to show some examples. Oh, we're gonna talk about this. These don't match. <laughs> And then I didn't couldn't find any um, overalls that fit me, so we got new ones. That doesn't match either. <laughs> and then we just wanted to talk about my hat. It's stained from someone dyeing their hair. And then with the plume that goes on the top, it looks like my hair. It doesn't look great. And then we had to tape the plume on instead of it staying in its place. And then with this um, top, it's stained all over from food, from grass, and from all of that. And then we just wanted to talk about why we wanted to get new ones. And they're white, so they get um, dirty easily. And then the confidence, when I got my new pants, I didn't really have the confidence to go up and conduct 
because I didn't feel great because my pants were different from my top. They were clear. And then we wanted to talk about what we wanted the new uniforms to look like. So that one's actually a concept that was drawn up by one of our band members um, who's actually part of our band cabinet as well. So this is just for the, right now, this picture is for the hat and the... And the top and the overalls, yes. And you, are they going to be black? Yes, because they don't get um, as dirty as white does. And then we would start dry cleaning them every year because these uniforms hadn't been dry cleaned in seven years until last year. Okay, we might have to discuss that a little bit because we really want to just try to stay with the colors, but we, as a board we can discuss that, so. Of course, uh, one of the things that we just want to maintain um, is this idea of, of promoting a positive culture and also um, ensuring that our arts department and specifically the band um, is well supported as well. Uh, it, when students see these new uniforms or when they feel like they're being supported, they're going to be more motivated and um, energized to, to be a part of the band, to be engaged, and they really have that confidence and motivation there to continue throughout the rest of the year. Um, and that's just one of the concepts that we're looking at right now. Um, it's not definitive, uh, but what we really do need is uh, new uniforms for this marching band. The process, how it would work? is we would contact companies and we would tell them what we want and we would send them to design and then they would edit them themselves so they could look like real marching band uniforms. And then we would order, order a full set, which is 100 and, um, 125 uniforms, and that would be $40,000. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. First, Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, ask a question. Yes, Mr. Thomas. First of all, I'd like to commend you on this. This is outstanding. It is. I mean, you know, to come in front, and um, I'm just, um, this is this is great, and and to to come up and to present it to us in a way that it was, it's like a, 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 a you, you get ready to go to college, so it's pr almost preparing you for your college. Um, um, uh, what is it? Uh, I did it in a while. It ain't your thesis. What is it, Senator? Ain't going to college, you do it, whatever. But I know. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. But what I want to say is, I I like this, and um, I don't see a problem uh, myself. And when it's for the students of Adams 14, it's hard for me. And a lot of up here know I go to bat for my students. Could and it's you? Hard, uh, uh, could you? Um, I have one question. Uh, is is there going to be an AC on these? Yes. Okay. It was just a draft. She did it oh, okay. tonight and this morning. Okay. She did it in a day. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and then Madam I just wanted to mention the shoes. Yeah. Really we do quickly. need these, though. I, yes. I totally yeah. agree. Um, these uniforms were bought in 2004. Yeah. And we need a change. They're I remember when they were bought. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, thank you, Mr. Clark, Ms. Martinez, for making us aware of this issue, I was actually going to bring up the exact same thing um, the chair did. Um, it would make the Commerce City Historical Society very happy if there was an AC or if we make sure it's an Adam City in some way. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I completely agree, these uniforms are in need of replacing, especially if they were new just a year after I graduated from <laughs> high school. So. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Next, we have Jasmine Telemontes. Hello, board members. My name is Jasmine Telemontes. I currently attend Adams City Middle School. I hear about the difficulties and obstacles and wars our school constantly faces. It's not just our school, though. It's our district and our community that is facing things as well. There isn't any faith that our schools can cope cooperate and succeed. Our opinion isn't taken into consideration because you guys think there's a better path. We're trying to tell you that this is what it will take for our school to soar high and for our school to become a better place than it already is. I've been in the Adams District since I was three years old when I first attended preschool at Sandville 
preschool. The teachers I've, I've had had are phenomenal in every <laughs> school. They all help us and push us forward, not just in school, but with other personal obstacles we face in life. They aren't just our teachers, they're like family. They do everything possible to see us succeed. Over the past year, my second brother that currently attends DuPont Elementary and I were helped by multiple of our teachers in becoming gifted and talented students. They've shown us, they've shown me that I'm capable and pushed me to pu push me to succeed in life. That's their job and their passion to prepare us for the world. My biggest fear with the changes that are trying to be made is to become a charter school. That's the reason why I attend Adam City Middle School because the school gives me more freedom. The school's becoming charter means higher risk of everyone leaving. I don't want this school to change because people move to these schools because of the same reason. They don't like the schools due to the differences from a public school. You guys gave us a choice and just completely turned it out. On behalf of the rest, I think that it's just not fair. We were given the option and path for a good, and you guys completely cut it off. I don't know what will happen because you guys, you guys don't know what will happen because you guys haven't even tried. You have no faith in us. It's disappointing that you want something different for us than what we think is best. It's just not fair. Take, into, take it into consideration. Look around. We need it. At the end of the day, it's all taken on to us, the students. We're the ones who have to suffer from the decisions that aren't meant for us. It's just not fair at all. I ask you to listen to the students, the teachers, and the community. Thank you. Next, Sarah, Emmy, Amy. Good evening, my name is Sarah Ely. Um, just six short months ago, I resigned from teaching in the middle of the year from a 13-year career in DPS to come to Adams 14 and fill the open music position at Alsup Elementary. It was the scary thing making a leap of faith to completely start over in this new district, but I fell in love with the positive climate at Alsup and the dedicated work of the amazing staff. Since I began, I have been advocating for all of the wonderful things going on at ALSIP and have captured the attention of several outside organizations and individuals who want to ensure that ALSIP students continue to have rich music making experiences. In partnerships with nonprofits like Little Kids Rock and Take Note Colorado, and through private donations, I have secured over $4,000 worth of instruments and technology for the ALSIP music program. In January, we started a before school modern band club called Eagle Rock. This is the awesome group that was scheduled to perform for you this evening before the meeting was moved um, at the last minute. One of my students, named Brian, was challenging for me in November when I first arrived. When I spoke to his teacher about his poor behavior choices, he was identified as low and hard to reach. His defense me mechanisms were up and he resisted help. But you should see Brian today. Since starting in the modern band, Brian has become interested in the guitar and drums so much that he arrives early before school every day to practice and learn independently. His behavior choices have improved for my class and for his other teachers, and he smiles and carries himself with pride and belonging. He is one of those classic cases where music has reached in and ignited a desire to learn where no other program or teacher could. And he is just one of the many ALSIP students that have been impacted by this program. And so it was disappointing to have to tell those students on Friday morning that their first performance of the year for you, the leaders of our district, would be canceled due to the change of venue in this, for this meeting, even though it had been planned for ALSIP since January. It was even more frustrating to hear one student say that they heard we might be turned into a charter school next year because, quote, they don't care about us anyway. Yes, the children are listening and they hear the rumors. I sat and fielded questions about with little to say besides, I don't know, it's out of my control. That seems to be a recurring theme in the district since I got here. With the support of my amazing principal and parent volunteers, we scrambled to put together an assembly yesterday where the band could play for their peers, and they gave an outstanding first performance despite having to set up and play outside on the blacktop. And so I'm here today to represent the ultimate casualties of this adult war, my ALSIP students who are at performance according to the state, but who are excelling far beyond what you and the state can see on a test. I implore you to keep ALSIP and our amazing staff and students in mind when you make these important decisions to give control to outside entities. I urge you to share success stories like these with our state board and take in consideration all of the things that are working in the district before deciding to fix what is not broken. Thank you. Barb McDowell.
Good evening, members of the board. Um, the Classroom Teachers Association, the Colorado Classified School Employees Association, parents and students have been working together to fight for all of the children in Adams 14. We haven't always been on the same page or seen eye to eye. However, we know that if the students who are in our collective care are to receive what they so greatly deserve, we need to find some common ground with all stakeholders. Given that, we believe everyone in this room cares deeply for the children of Adams 14 and that those of you sitting on the dais along with us want what's best for this district, for our children and this community. Therefore, we must all be able to come together and find some common ground so we can fight this battle together. We must remember, as it's already been stated, that the children are watching us and we must be the change we wish them to see. We must teach them how to advocate for themselves and for what they see needs changed. We must show them how to treat others the way we want to be treated. And we must teach them how to work with those whom they may not always get along with. For that reason, we are asking for the board to stand with us in front of the state to defend public education for all of our students. We are asking that you work with us to who have whomever our EMO will be to sign on to the community school platform that was recently approved by the legislature because we believe the Commerce City community working together to address all of the needs of our students and their families will help make our schools and district a place all of us can be proud of once more. Thank you. Deborah Figueroa. Good evening, I'm Deborah Figueroa. I am a teacher at Kearney Middle School. I'm going to read something on behalf of Adams County Democratic Party Executive Committee. Um, has unanimously voted to show support for the Adams County School District 14 in their attempt to maintain local control as they are a school district in turnaround status by the State Board of Education. So whereas we support Adams County School District 14 in their endeavors to recognize and restructure while maintaining local control. Whereas we believe in local control, adequate funding, smaller class sizes, keeping and retaining high quality teachers and neighborhood schools. Whereas we believe in preschool and full day kindergarten. Whereas we believe in quality before and after school programs. Whereas we believe the students deserve strong leaders in positions of authority within the school district. Whereas we support teachers in their efforts to collectively bargain. <coughs> Whereas we support the community school model. Whereas we are against privatization and corporatization of public schools. Where we are against funneling of public monies to charter schools. Where we at, whereas we support local formative assessments over standardized testing, whereas we support proper resources in helping our English language learners, whereas we support our children's basic needs such as food, clothing and shelter being met, whereas we encourage resources available to all parents in all of our schools, whereas we support adequate mental health resources, whereas we support a learning environment that is safe and dry. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Adams County Democratic Party Executive Committee on behalf of its members urges the Adams County School District School Board to choose an external management organization that will adopt, and sus uh, 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 adopt a sustainable community school model and work with all of the stakeholders to implement an innovative and successful turnaround plan that man maintains local control. Thank you on behalf of the Adams County Democratic Party Executive Committee. Can I give this to you? Oh, we, we all have one. Okay. Yeah. 
Guillermo Serna. Guillermo Serna. I put on their concern. By the way, that was a unanimous decision on what she just read from Adams County Executive Committee. I respect everything that you do, the positives, the negatives, because I know, I know all of you, and you all have our children at heart. But the state board has put one hell, pardon my language, of a weight on you. And it's simply their mistake. If this district wasn't being successful, the way I see it in the last 40 years, they haven't given you the resources to get it done. They keep sending you people from that office to assist, to assist, but never in a positive tone and never believing in our children. The hierarchy of society has made rules, labor, okay, and passing Tabor at one point, and yet the big schools with all 70,000 kids, 60,000 kids, the Denvers, the Boulders, the Colorado Springs that have the funds and can recruit people from Cherry Creek and can sustain good direction have let you down. In my perspective, what I see is that the state board has not done its job. And you as a community, representatives for our children in their education should file suit against the state board just simply because they haven't listened. We've had civil lawsuits. We haven't been receiving what we need to do to bring in more education for our children. They keep pointing fingers at a community that was brought in going from 12% to 83 to 85 percent in the last 20 years to build the airport, to build Denver, to provide services, yet the hierarchy, all they can say is, you're not doing your job. We are doing our job. Our kids are being successful. That they are not being given the opportunity to graduate, that they are not being given the opportunity to maintain teachers and keep them here. We talk about music. I just came down Quebec Street. I saw kids playing baseball. I saw kids playing soccer. Their future, their dreams. They have dreams too. We just don't give them the opportunity. And I say we, because I still think that if you do something in perspective to fight for this district and to fight for these children, the community will back you up. And I would like to invite that state board to come and meet with us and challenge us that we can't get it done. I have a person here, I see him, Cherry Creek, full time, you know. He's been from here to there, from the bottom to the top. Why do I see him here now? Where were they when we needed this type of direction? Yes, we make mistakes, but they can be correct. And remember that we are in a technical area. Give me one more minute, please. In a technical area, okay, where we say it's a revolution. No. It's an if, if, what's the word that I'm looking for? These kids are open to their future. And the state board doesn't realize that. The leaders in 
all the principals and all the superintendents that earn millions and millions of dollars throughout these last 40 years, okay, together, not singularly, okay, are not responding to the needs of the kids that really need it. The, peop the kids that are successful because their parents are successful will be successful because they got the road. The kids that need assistance, they're barely putting a trail because nobody wants to put them on that road. So think about it. I would ask the lawyer or bosses or teachers, will they back you up and the parents themselves? And I know that they will. That state board up there hasn't done nothing for the last 40 years other than complain and not give school boards that direction. Again, I thank you for your time because I know that this community as a whole backs you up and they want to back you up. Suits for the bands, okay? It's, it's a normal thing. We need people, but when we start eliminating all these histories here, this country for the first 200 years was illiterate, and it took public schools to get it done. Not from the hierarchy, because the hierarchy was already educating their kids, but they weren't educating the lower part. Read that history, and I think you'll understand what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Thank you. Joanna Rosa Sainz. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, my name is Joanna Rosa Sainz. I'm with the Cave Padres, a lifelong Latina community organizer. Um, I'm here again, and um, just thank you for your time, everything you guys have been doing. Um, this young lady is a family member of mine. And t this evening, she had the courage to speak, and I'm very proud of her for doing that. Um, I just have one thing to say, and it is just this. Um, I I've been here for a while, and since day one, my message has been kids in Adams 14 need better schools. And kids tomorrow morning still have to wake up and go to school. They have to go to school in the 2019, 2020, and after that. So I know it's a lot, a lot on your plate, um, whatever decision you make, but that's just about the kids. So that's it. I just wanted you guys to remind you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to consent items, personnel 1.1. Can I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move for the approval of item 1.1. May I have a second? Madam Chair, I second item 1.1. Discussion? <coughs> Seeing none. Monica Roca. Mr. Moreno. Aye. Mrs. Quintana. Aye. Mr. Rola. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. And we're, now we're on business 1.0 resolution. 2.1 resolution 19. <coughs> Dash 005, external management organization. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I, I move for the approval of resolution 19 005. May I have a second? Madam Chair, I second. Discussion? Seeing none. Roll call, Monica. Do you want to? You want me to read it before yes. you take the vote? Yes. Okay. Resolution number 19-005. Resolution selecting MGT of America Consulting LLC as lead management partner. Whereas on November 27, 2018, the Colorado State Board of Education issued an order extending a stay of the removal of the Adams County School District 14's accreditation, conditioned on the Board of Education of the district selecting a public or private entity to serve as lead partner with the board in the management of the district. Whereas on February 12, 2019, following reasonable public notice and the thorough engagement of community stakeholders, the board adopted resolution number 19-002, selecting Mapleton Public Schools, legally known as Adam County School District Number 1, to serve as lead partner with the board and the management <coughs> of the district, 
to the demonstrator can best meet the requirements of the request for qualifications proposal and the State Board of Education's order is recommended by the district community. Whereas on March 14, 2019, the State Board reviewed the board's selection and several members of the State Board expressed concerns about Mapleton's ability to meet all the requirements of the November 27, 2018 order without outside help. Whereas the State Board passed a motion to continue its consideration of this matter to a future meeting and requested that Adams County School District 14 work with Mapleton Public Schools and or others to strengthen its application by identifying additional partners with whom they will work. Whereas on March 19, 2019, <coughs> Board President Connie Quintana sent a letter to the President of the Mapleton Board of Education asking whether Mapleton is willing to the State Board's request and strengthen its application by identifying additional partners. Whereas on March 25, 2019, the Board adopted Resolution Number 19-004, in which it stated its willingness to work with Mapleton to strengthen its application by identifying MGT of America Consulting LLC in association with the University of Virginia Darden Curry Partnership for Leaders in Education, which was widely regarded as the community's second recommendation as additional partners with whom it will work with the Board and the management of the district. Whereas on April 8, 2019, representatives from Adams 14, Mapleton, and the Colorado Department of Education, including Board President Quintana, Mapleton's Board President and Superintendent, and CDE's Deputy Commissioner, met face-to-face -to, -face to discuss the State Board's motion and next steps regarding the potential management partnership. Whereas by the end of the meeting, it was apparent that there would not be an amended application and Adams 14 and Mapleton were unlikely to complete a viable management partnership that would meet the State Board's approval. Whereas on April 11, 2019, the State Board rejected Mapleton selection, leaving the Board 14 days in which to select another entity to serve as lead partner in the management of the district. During discussion, members of the State Board expressed concerns about the track record and capacity of the community's second recommendation, MGT UVA, which it had just approved as the management partner of schools in Adams Arapaho 28J School District and Pueblo School District 60. Whereas immediately after the State Board's action, district representatives began reaching out to the remaining finalists evaluated by community stakeholders to explore continuing interest in serving as lead management partner and ensure mutually acceptable terms could be reached that would meet the State Board's approval. Whereas the Board held study sessions to hear from MGT UVA on April 16, 2019 and Empower on April 22, 2019. The Board also heard from Schools Cube during a data session on April 17, 2019. Whereas MGT UVA demonstrated it has heard the State Board's concerns and is bringing in additional professionals with extensive experience improving startling schools and school districts with similar student populations. Whereas MGT UVA is also actively engaged in including Schools Cubed as an additional partner in the management of the district. Whereas a community identifying the following specific strengths of MGT UVA. One, understand data and analysis. Two, large team with lots of resources and connections. Three, leadership program <coughs> has lots of choice. Four, understanding the process of change and the challenges. And five, they have done work like this before. Whereas the district administrators identify the following strengths of MGT UVA. One, consultants are local and have 45 years of experience with turnaround schools. Two, they have the capacity to create transformational change in Adams 14 and have done this in districts throughout the United States and in Colorado. And three, they have experience working with the Office for Civil Rights. Whereas district administrators spoke with representatives of Aurora Public Schools and Cato Parish Public Schools and received very positive information about those districts' experiences working with MGT and UVA. Whereas the board has concerns about Empower's capacity to begin transformative work once a management contract is signed, as Empower has indicated, the ex extended selection process has prejudiced its ability to obtain high-quality school operators for the 2019-20 school year, which was a major component of the split-screen strategy described in its application. Whereas the board is also concerned that Empower's reliance on a community-based management board will not be successful, given that it will require robust community engagement, and among the finalists, Empower's candidacy garnered the least amount of support from community stakeholders. Whereas, like the community, the board is concerned that Empower has not elaborated on numerous important details in its application, despite several opportunities to provide clarification, 
And whereas the board's <laughs> process of selecting a lead partner has now consumed four months, and it is in the best interest of the district's students, parents, and employees, and community to move the selection process forward as required by the state board's November 27, 2018 order. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education, Adams County School District 14, that it selects MGT of America Consulting, LLC, in association with the University of Virginia Darden Curry Partnership for Leaders in Education, as lead partner with the board in the management of the district as follows. MGT UVA has demonstrated it can best meet requirements of the RFQP and the State Board's order. For example, MGT uses research-based strategies and has an improving track record of a, impressive proven track record of success in working with school districts and schools across the United States, including schools in Colorado, in systemic improvement and turnaround work to address the, address the achievement gap, rigorous attainment of learning standards, teacher training, and leadership development. Initial results from MGT's management of Nokati Elementary School in Florida and the Gary Community School District in Indiana, for example, are promising. An instructional intervention in Madison and Hamilton County Public Schools in Florida resulted in measurable improvement and higher school accountability grades after just seven months. MGC itself has 45 years of experience, including professionals with 25 years of system leadership in Colorado, helping public school districts and schools achieve success. MGT, MGT demonstrated that it understands data and analysis as well as the components of successful schools and a successful school <coughs> system in a wide variety of communities, including those similar to the district. MGT UVA affirmed that it honors local control and works to build trust and faith in the community, so it will support and be actively engaged in turnaround efforts. With a staff of more than 110 experts, including an experienced former superintendent of a high-performing local school district as Colorado project manager, an extended network of qualified subconsultants, and a strong background in academic, financial, operations, governance, and community engagement work, MGT has demonstrated it has the capacity to create transformational change in the district, meet the specific needs of all the district students, including its minority, low income, non-native English speaking, and disabled students, and improve the recruitment and retention of effective, highly qualified teachers and leaders. MGT firms demonstrated it can provide practical, proven, collaborative management by combining nationally recognized best practices with customized support that will further to the district's mission of inspiring, educating, and empowering every student to succeed in the 21st century in partnership with the community, all while building an equitable and inclusive district-wide culture and climate free of bullying, discrimination, and harassment. MGT also employs staff with many years of cumulative experience working with the U.S. Department of Education Office for Civil Rights and is familiar with both overarching legal rights and the requirements of the district's resolution agreements. Unlike other EMO applicants, MGT clearly indicated it is able to devote at least seven employees to work with the district on a full-time basis. MGT also reaffirmed its willingness to team with existing district staff to achieve school transformation and deliver an environment of continuous improvement that is ultimately sustainable. MGT greatly complements its expertise and capacity by including UVA in its management partnership. UVA empowers leaders to ignite system and school change by building leadership capacity at both the district and school level to maximize efforts of others, identify and solve problems, rethink organizational design, and define a pathway to transformational student outcomes. UVA has 16 years of experience with eight years in Colorado, and it offers a well-regarded school leadership development program that emphasizes improving school system conditions through leadership, differentiated support and accountability, talent management, and instructional infrastructure. Like MGT, UVA similarly has a proven track record of success working with school districts and schools across the United States, including those in Colorado. Recent results show 85% of schools working with UVA that started below state average closed the gap and 18% of participating schools closed the average by over 20 points within two years. Of the 28 Colorado schools UVA has worked with that have more than two years of results, 16 moved up at least one performance plan rating, which for 12 schools meant exiting the accountability clock. Including Schools Cubed as an additional partner would further enhance MGD's capacity and expertise. Chief Educational Officer of Schools Cubed has 27 years as a special education teacher, principal at the elementary and middle school levels, as well as a district leader and at the State Department of Education. Schools Cubed is currently working with the district on improving early literacy with encouraging early results. 
It also has worked on transformative improvement in Colorado and several other states, including a school in Missouri and statewide projects in Missouri, Air Mississippi, Arizona, and Utah. And be it further resolved that the Board of Education Adams County School District 14 request MGT of America Consulting LLC in association with the University of Virginia Darden Curry Partnership for Leaders in Education collaborate with the board, its council, and district staff in further strengthening of its application as may be appropriate, beginning contract negotiations, and preparing to present the management partnership to the Colorado State Board of Education at its regular meeting on May 8 to 9, 2019. Reports and recommendations referenced above and in resolution number 19-002, including the district's turnaround plan, submission of all management partner applicants, district administration community feedback and all records of public comment are hereby incorporated this resolution and made part of the official record. Thank you. So now I'd like to um, get a motion to uh, approve the resolution. So, okay. So, Monica, can we have roll call? Mr. Moreno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Moving on to resolution 2.1. I mean, agenda to business 2.1. Resolution 19-006. A resolution calling for a credit recovery fee charge for Adams 14. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move for the approval of resolution 19-006. May I have a second? Madam Chair, second. Resolution 19-006. Discussion? Seeing none, roll call, Monica. Mr. Modeno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Moving on to grants 1.0. 1.1, superintendent's recommendation, approval to apply the gift, gifted education universal screening and qualified personnel grant from the Colorado Department of Education. Madam Chair, I move for the approval of item 1.1 under grants. May I have a second? Madam Chair, I second item 1.1. Roll call. Mr. Modeno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Moving on to other 2.0. 3.1. Superintendent's recommendation. Acceptance of, no, of do, a donation from the estate of Delega. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move for the approval of item 3.1. May I have a second? Madam Chair, I second item 3.1. Any uh, discussion? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a quick question for whoever's able to answer this, because um, I've not um, seen anything like this before. What do we do for you know, the family that does designate the district as the beneficiary of their estate? Do we, how do we show our appreciation, basically? I, I know um, we were going to either send them a, a thank you and uh, possibly, I think there was something, uh, some discussion on naming something in our district for them. Yes. Okay. Is it on? There we go. Yeah, it's kind of low. Um, board members, yes, we've been in contact with the family, um, expressed our gratitude. Uh, they did express some interest in what we may do with the donation, as well as um, we send a personalized letter uh, card and card of thank you and gratitude. And they also asked if we would consider in our new building project at ALSUP um, or others in the district that we might consider putting a plaque or a, a naming of some sort up on their behalf as a result of recognizing um, this gra very gracious donation from a former employee. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, can you explain that a little bit to the audience, why we got this? It was uh, a former employee in our district has passed, and in that person's will um, left uh, this amount of money to the school district. Thank you. Thank you. May I have a roll call, Monica? Mr. Modeno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Moving on to 3.2, superintendent's recommendation, 
by approval of a donation from Salud Family Health Centers. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move for the approval of item 3.2. Second. Madam Chair, I second item 3.2. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, Monica, roll call. Mr. Moreno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Moving on to 3.3, superintendent's recommendation. Approval to purchase 280 I, I, IPEVO document cameras. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move for the approval of item 3.3. <coughs> May I have a second? Madam Chair, I second item 3.3. .3. Any discussion? Seeing none, Monica, roll call. Mr. Moreno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Moving on to 3.4, superintendent's recommendation, approval to renew Barracuda web filter service contract. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move for the approval of item 3.4. May I have a second? Madam Chair, I second item 3.4. Discussion? Seeing none, Monica, roll call. Mr. Moreno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Moving on to 3.5, superintendent's recommendation, approval of out-of-state travel to attend Western Pathways Conference in Portland, Oregon on May 7th through the 10th, 2019. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move for the approval of item 3.5. Yes. Uh, may I have a second? Second. May Monica, I? 3.5. Um, roll call, Monica. Mr. Moreno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? No. Moving on to 3.6, superintendent's recommendation. Approval for in-state overnight travel to Fort Collins, Colorado, to attend the Colorado Autism Conference on June 4th through the 6th, 2019. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move for the approval of item 3.6. May I have a second? Second for the approval of 3.6. Discussion? Seeing none, Monica, roll call. Mr. Moreno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Next, we're going to go on to board actions. A nomination for for appointment of the board member vacancy uh, to fill it. May I have? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. First, I, I just want to thank all the applicants who have um, submitted uh, their names for consideration uh, for the uh, position on the Adams 14 board. I think we have some incredible applicants to choose from and <coughs> greatly appreciate your interest. Um, in serving this community, that's um, that's really wonderful. Um, in some of the interviews, um, some things were were brought to light um, that caused me to reflect on maybe what we are perhaps lacking on this board. And for me, what's maybe lacking is the perspective of a parent who has children in the district um, currently. No one on this board actually has <coughs> children who attend uh, Adams 14 schools, and I think that would be a really invaluable perspective to have. Um, so I, I certainly don't want to cut off discussion in any way, um, but I'm prepared to make a motion and nomination when we're ready. Anybody else? No, I'm good. No? Go ahead. I'd just like to uh, say thank you for applying. And if you are not selected, don't stop there. You know, th there'll be four openings on this board come November. And I hope this doesn't discourage you if you don't get selected to not to run because you're, you're, you have put in that you are very, very interested in our community. And that's what we need, individuals that are very interested in the community. So once again, if you're not selected, you know, I always told my students, you're going to go in this world and there's going to be times you're going to be knocked down. 
and you have choices. You can stay down or you can get up and move on. So hopefully you'll get up and move on if you're not selected. Madam Chair, I move to nominate Laura Martinez for the vacant position on the Adams 14 Board of Education. So. Second. Okay. Yeah, I, I nominate her, Laura. Okay. So that's three. Discussions. Well, we did do that discussion. Yeah. We got a vote. Yeah, discussion. We already did. He didn't want anything. Madam Chair. No, roll call. You, roll call. You, you're, um, you're welcome to have further discussion if there is any, and or you can move for but a vote. We did. But you have a motion. You have a motion to um, a nomination that's been properly seconded. Right. And we open discussion. Now we need roll call. Monica? Mr. Modeno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Congratulations. Should we do the swearing in now? Um, first, you need to adopt a formal resolution. That would be okay. uh, 4.1A uh, that memorializes and makes the appointment legal and effective. 4.1A. It's resolution number 19-007. Yeah. Would you like me to read that for you? Yes, please. Resolution number 19-007, resolution appointing director to the Board of Education. Whereas the resignation of Bill Hyde from the Adams 14 Board of Education was effective February 27th, 2019. And whereas there's a need to fill the vacancy in the school director office within 60 days and to serve the term until the ne next regular school biennial election in November 2019. Now therefore be it resolved by the Adams 14 Board of Education appoints Laura Martinez as a director to the Board of Education. Okay. Madam Senator. Chair, I, I move for the approval of resolution number 19-007. I have a second. Madam Chair, I second resolution 19-007. Roll call. Mr. Monica. Moreno. Aye. Mrs. Quintana. Aye. Mr. Roller. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Now, Madam Chair, you may proceed to uh, administer the oath. So, Laura, can you come up to the podium? And Miss Salvina will swear you in. On this 23rd day of April 2019, I, Laura Martinez, having been duly appointed as a director of the Board of Education, having been duly appointed as a director of the Board of Education, Adams 14 School District, Colorado, Adams 14 School District, Colorado, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will faithfully perform the duties, that I will faithfully perform the duties of the office of the school director as required by law of the Office of School Director as required by law. 
and will support the Constitution of the United States. And will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution, the Constitution of the State of Colorado. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. And the laws made pursuant thereto. And the laws made pursuant thereto. And I'd like to congratulate her for congratulations. But I want to congratulate all the other ones. Uh, we do have four slots coming open in November. Actually, that that one will be open in November also. And Mr. Thomas, Mr. Moreno's, and Mr. Rollins will be open in November. So we'll have four. So please run <laughs> because it's so much more challenging when you get uh, elected really because of all the work and Laura will have a little experience too so she'll be able to uh, run for uh, in November so I just want to thank everybody because I thought all the answers were really great and I do appreciate everybody who did apply the, this is not an easy thing to do and I just want to thank all the applicants for doing this thank you yeah. uh, <laughs> thank you madam chair thank you members of the board for giving me this opportunity uh, this is primarily for my children and the 7,500 other children that are out there. And I know that together we're going to get things done. So thank you. And uh, community, remember that uh, we're here for you. And uh, if you have any questions, concerns, and you know we're here to support you as well. Thank you. <laughs> so can I say in Spanish? OK. Gracias a todos los miembros que vinieron, a los miembros de la comunidad y 
uh, estamos aquí para servirles si necesitan algo, tienen alguna pregunta uh, estoy aquí para ustedes por los niños, uh, por mis niños y los otros 7500 niños que están aquí, así que no duden en hacérmelos saber que estamos aquí por ustedes gracias Uh, es el otro parte que uh, uh, necesitamos es una persona quien habla uh, español mejor de ustedes. Sí. And I understood that, and I understood her. I don't speak it, but I do understand it, so be careful. <laughs> but um, next we need to, um, if I'm correct, appoint the treasurer and um, that's 4.2 so we need to um, do that and go ahead. Uh, thank you uh, madam chair I move to appoint director Dave Rolla as treasurer of the board can I have a second madam chair I second 4.2 Director Dave Roller to Treasurer. May I have roll call? Mrs. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Moreno? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Roller? Nay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Oh. And so that. Uh, <laughs> oh, you have to switch, yes. I forgot. Treasure is going to go over there. Okay. So I'd like to just thank everybody for tonight's um, meeting. It, I thought it went really well. And uh, right now we're in communications. Does anybody have any communications? Mr. Thomas? Not right now. Come back. Mr. Murray. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Again, I just want to say thank you to all the folks who applied uh, for the open vacancy on the board. Welcome, uh, Ms. Martinez, to the uh, Board of Education. Um, actually, us sitting next to, next to each other is reminding me of high school a lot. We often sat next to each other um, in different classes in high school, so this is, this is great. Anybody? Yes. I want to thank Ms. Martinez, and good job well done. I look forward to working with you. I want to thank all the other candidates that put in their application, and it was um, a lot of good questions, a lot of good answers, so th that first. And also, too, I want to uh, apologize to the parents and the students at all sub that we had to change the venue to here and I don't want that to be missed and I'd like to uh, ask can we get a consensus to uh, have the next board meeting at all sub so we can hear the students and I don't want to let them know that um, they hard work don't go un announced so I like Madam Chair can we get a consensus to do the next board meeting at all sub please Let's see when that is uh, Seventh of May. Is it May seventh? Fourteenth. Oh, yes, that's right. Fourteenth. I know we normally do do the. Um, well, let me check with. Yeah. Miss Ovina, do yeah. we have anything? Any other school on that night? Well, the first meeting of um, meeting? each month is here. Here. Right. So it, would it be much trouble to move, switch them around? I'll reach out to them. What? I can reach out to them. Okay. So we'll we'll get with uh, Alsep and and let you know for sure if we can manage that because I do want to hear the the band yeah I only say that because my kids were in band and I know how important it is um, and 
I got one more thing. And Madam Chair, I'm not sure. Um, I, I am for sure, but I just would like for um, Ms. Moore to find out who do we find out about those band uniforms. The band uniforms. Who directly, who do we um, check with and come back to the board as soon as possible? I'll put it in our Friday updates. And the total cost. Thank you. I'm good. I'd just like to thank the other three individuals that applied. You did a good job, and I hope one of you will step up and take my spot. They won't bother me. So, you know, we need new minds, and we were really once told do. we had to start getting younger people yes. up here on the board. Well, here's the opportunity, because you never get I don't think there'll ever be in the history of this district four openings at one time. It's usually three and two. And so this is uh, an opportunity for a lot of the younger generation to come in as uh, Austin had said something about the younger people getting involved. Well, this is a good time to do it. And I think uh, it'd be a good choice since hopefully they'll be able to work with uh, MGT to make new changes and they can listen to what the young generation wants. So don't quit, keep hanging in there, thank you. And I've said it before, but please run Mr. Rawson, Mr. Dryling, and Ms. Molina, uh, because we do have four coming up in Ms. Martinez. And there's a great opportunity here. And Mr. Dryling has been on here before, so he knows a lot about what it's about and how to handle it. Um, and I just want to thank everybody uh, for, this has been a long, hard three years, let me put it that way. And I think we're, we're almost going to get there. And with everybody working together uh, as a team, as Ms. Martinez said, and I say a lot, we may not always agree, but we can work together as a team without bad-mouthing people, putting bad names. We can do this. And as long as we have young minds, young minds, because you're still young, Mr. Dryling, um, I think it'll be great. And that's what I have to say. Anything else? You, no? You want to go? Uh -huh. Thank and you. Go for ahead. Being here. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for this opportunity. And uh, I look for forward to serving this wonderful district and making it. I know it's a long shot, but it's not impossible to be, make it the best district in the state. So that's my Thank goal. you. <laughs> and we are adjourned at 742. Thank everybody for coming. <laughs>